In our lessons over the past couple of weeks, we have been taking a look at Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus, where in the church of Ephesus, there were both Jews and Gentiles. There was strife, as we saw in my Sunday school lesson last week, there was a bit of strife, a bit of contention in the church to where the Jews were looking down on the Gentiles. And again, all of these who were in the church were, were believers. They at least professed to be of faith. And so Paul, in the lessons that we have seen over the past couple of weeks, he was calling on these believers, these professed believers to, to be more sincere in their faith. And so in our lesson last week, we saw where Paul, he was calling on there to be unity within the household of God. There should be no divisions in the household of God. All of us as sincere believers, we should be loving one another. We should not be, be bringing down, we should not be tearing down each other. And here in our lesson this week, we'll see where Paul, he speaks about there being a higher calling. There is a high calling for all of those who profess to be of faith when they move in sincere faith. And we'll see that as we begin here in our lesson this week, there in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, in the first verse, we will see where Paul, he implores those who are in the church of Ephesus, he implores them to walk worthy of the calling for which they were called. Is this a statement that is only meant for those who are in the church of Ephesus, or is this something that, that all of us as believers should be doing today? You have to wonder, are you walking worthy of the calling for which you were called? Because all of us as believers, we have all been called, right? Some of us, we may begin to wonder, well, if I have been called, well, what was my calling? What you understand, I'm not talking about the gift that, that God has blessed you with. I'm talking about the calling of all sincere believers. Again, many have been called, but only a few have answered the call. You remember that from our Sunday school lesson a few weeks ago? And so what is that calling? Well, the calling is for us to love the Lord with our whole heart, right? And in that love, who are we supposed to love? We are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That is our high calling, love. We are to, to love, we are to, to be love, we are to move in love, we are to again be just as God who is love as well. We'll see Paul, he touches on this moving in love there in the second verse, where Paul, he states that we should walk with all lowliness. He doesn't say that we should be filled with pride, he doesn't say that we should be filled with ego, does he? He says that we should walk with all gentleness, with all long suffering, that we should bear with one another in love. We, we are to, to be humble, moving out of humility. We, we are to be patient with each other, bearing with each other, Paul said there. You'll notice there from that second verse, those characteristics, they sound very familiar to how Paul defined love in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians where Paul said that, that love is not puffed up. It doesn't boast. Paul said that out of faith, hope, and love, he said that love is the greatest of them all. And the way that, that Paul defined love in the 13th chapter of First Corinthians was by taking a look at not man, but by taking a look at the love of God. He took a look at God because again, God is love. And God in his love towards us, He's patient with us, right? He bears with us. He's merciful. When, when you and I, when we're going out there and, and we're, we're giving in to temptation, right? When, when we're going out and, and we are sinning and, and we know that we are being disobedient, the Lord, he doesn't end us right then and there, does he? No. God hasn't condemned. He hasn't judged. He gave his only begotten son to, to give us a word of repentance. To, to call, he, he rebuked us, told us that we were doing wrong. And then he showed us the way in which we should live if we desire to live in the way that is holy, if we desire to live in a way that is proper, that is righteous. That is how, how God loved us. So how are we, how should we love one another? I imagine that, that we should be loving each other in the same manner in which God has loved us. Paul, he said there in the third verse to those who are of that church, the church of Ephesus, that they should endeavor, 
that they should, in other words, strive to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. What are you striving for today as a child of God? Many of us will say, well, I'm striving to get to heaven. Well, I tell you that in your stride to get to heaven, you better be moving out of love. But the, the sad thing about it today is that there are many who profess to be of faith that move out of selfishness rather than move out of love. How can you profess to be of faith? How can you say that you are a believer, but you're not moving out of love? You're moving out of selfishness. You're, you're moving out of bitterness. And, and, and again, if you remember my recent study from, from the second chapter of the book of Revelation about the, the church of Ephesus, Jesus got on that church because of the bitterness, the lacking of compassion that was in the church. And that's what we have seen Paul getting on this church about as well. This church, it lacked in love and he's calling for, for those who are of this church to love. The sincere believers, we, we, we may certainly create divisions because we, we choose to live by faith. The sinner may not love that, but we shouldn't be create, going out and, and creating strife. We, we shouldn't be going out and keeping up a whole bunch of mess for the sake of doing it. It's one thing to, to go out and to share the word of God and for someone to, to you know, dislike you for, for doing that. But it is another thing to go out and to cause strife and to, to cause divisions because you don't like somebody for some other reason. That is unbecoming of the child of God. Again, Paul, he said there in, in the fourth verse, he referenced the unity that we discussed in our lesson last week, we'll see there, where he reminds the believers in the church of Ephesus that there is one body and one spirit, and all of those in the body were called in one hope. As I reference, and I've been referencing over the past few weeks, that there is just one flock. And Jesus, he said that himself. He said that in the 10th chapter of John's gospel and the 16th verse. Jesus didn't say that he's going to be one shepherd over many flocks, over flocks of black folks and white folks, over Asian folks and Mexican folks, right? Jesus said that he is going to be the shepherd over one flock. That flock is going to be, yes, made up of, of many different people, but in that flock is going to be one family of brothers and sisters in, in Christ. And so Paul, he reiterates there in the fifth verse that the sincere believers, we're not just in one body. We're not just in one spirit. We are also in one Lord. We are also in one faith. We are also in one baptism. And in saying that, Paul is speaking to the fact that there should be no divisions. Again, as I said in last week's lesson, there should be no divisions in the body of Christ. There should be no divisions in the household of God. But we look around today, and again, I reference what, what MLK, what he said about Sunday, and how Sunday at 11 o'clock, when folks go out to church, that is the most seg segregated period of time in, in the world, in America specifically, is what MLK was talking about, where we go out, we worship the Lord. All of us, uh, we say that we're worshiping the Lord, the one who gave his only begotten son, that's who I worship, but we do it segregated. We do it separated each other. We, we are divided among grace, divided among class of wealth. That's definitely something that's man-made, right? We are divided among denominations. That again is something that is definitely man-made. God didn't create denominations, we did that. Christ, when, when he ministered, when, when he shared the gospel, he didn't care whether you were Jew or Gentile, he would minister, he would help. But again, you and I, we live in a world that is so divided among silly lines, is what I would say to where, again, in his letter to the church in Rome, Paul said that we must learn how to live peaceably with all people. We who are of sincere faith, 
Why can't we do that? But we say that we love God and we say that the love of God, that it pours through our spirit, but we go out and, and we create divisions. You and I, we have a higher calling than creating divisions and tearing down those that are, that are around us. We'll see there again, Paul, he again said there in the sixth verse, on the note of unity, he stated that there is one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. And so Paul's goal, it is made very clear here to where again, for those who are in the church of Ephesus, the Jews and the Gentiles, he desired to bring them together. We, we again, we should not be apart. What can we accomplish in the church when we are separated, when we are apart, you know, what, what, what can we accomplish in the world when we are separated and when we are apart, you know, there, there can be no progress when there is divisions. And that's, that's the biggest struggle that we see in the world today. And that's also, guess what? The biggest struggle that we see in the church today is that when we are apart, there can be no progress. So we must learn to come together, right? And the way that we come together is through love. Not the love that man has defined for us, but the love that, that God has defined for us. And so on that note, we should be elevating again each other through the love of God. We should be uplifting each other through the love of God. And we see Paul, he, he speaks on this starting there in the seventh verse where where Paul, he speaks to the measure of Christ's gift that has been given to each of us sincere believers. Now, when we take a look at the eighth through the 10th verse, it would almost seem like Paul that he veers off the subject of the higher calling there, where Paul, he speaks about Christ descending to the depths of hell, to the lower parts of the earth, to, to free the captive that was held there. Paul, he again was talking about what Christ did after his death on the cross, after his physical death, where, where scripture, again, we're taking a look at it, where scripture talks about how Christ descended, that is descended to the lower parts of the earth to, to set free the Old Testament faithful that were waiting there in paradise and in Abraham's bosom, as it is uh, called there. And after freeing those who were held there, in that portion of hell, they weren't in prison in hell, they were in paradise, Christ, he ascended, bringing them with them to, to be where he is today. That is where all of us will go when we leave this, this flesh, when we leave this fleshly, this uh, prison of flesh that, that we are in. We will ascend, we will go to be where Christ is. So Paul, he shares this bit of information with us today because in John's gospel, in the 16th chapter of John's gospel, if you take a look at the 16th chapter and you take a look at the seventh verse, you'll see where, where Christ, he spoke about how he needed to, to leave, how he needed to go away so that we may receive the helper, that is the Holy Spirit, who serves in the role there in the 13th verse, there in the 16th chapter of John's gospel, he serves in the role of the Holy Spirit in leading us unto all truth. Truth that, that you and I, we must be attentive to. We must heed the voice of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, he said there in the 14th verse in the 16th chapter of John's gospel, that we must heed the voice of the Holy Spirit because the Spirit glorifies Christ and will take of what is Christ and declare it to us who are of sincere faith. And so that is the note that Paul is speaking on. He's speaking on that note to tell us what the Holy Spirit has declared to us, not simply verbally, but the Holy Spirit has given to us today as well. We'll see there in 11 verse that Paul says the spirit has given to some to be apostles, to some prophets, to some evangelists, to others, pastors and teachers. These are gifts that are given out by the Holy Spirit. These are gifts that I would say are the gifts of a verbal ministry. There in the 12th verse, 
Paul tells us that these gifts that they have been given for the equipping of the saints and for the edifying, that is the uplifting, that is the elevating, as I've been speaking of, that is the elevating of the body of Christ. As I said to, to my brother uh, a few weeks ago, we have been given gifts to better one another. The worst thing that, that you and I can do is take the gifts that have been given to us by the Lord, take those gifts and be selfish. And when I say be selfish, I'm talking about holding those gifts hostage. You know, we, we should be sharing those gifts that have, have been given to us. I think about the first things that, that, that I learned growing up when, when I went to, to daycare preschool, right? The first things that we were taught in preschool was that sharing is caring. Don't be selfish. We, if we care about our, our friends, if we love our friends, we, we are to share. That's one of the first things that I learned uh, in preschool. But again, we've gotten away from that, haven't we? Sharing is caring, right? But we, we are so selfish today selfish and greedy. We, we don't want others to, to be elevated. We don't want others to be uplifted. What is wrong? What is wrong with us? I, I often wonder. Paul, he tells us there again in the 13th verse that these gifts, they have been given to us for us to come together in the unity of faith and to the knowledge of the son of God. We are blessed with these gifts. Paul said there still in the 13th verse, to uplift each other to be perfect, he said there, to the stature of the fullness of Christ. As I have said, we have a high calling, and the high calling for us is to strive to be perfect. We are to be progressing, striving towards that mark, but we, we aren't doing it, are we? we? We aren't reaching that level, are we? That level, it almost seems unimaginable in our society. And you know why that level seems unimaginable in our society? It's because we, we see the hatred. We see the wickedness. We, we see the divisions. We see the selfishness. We see the greed. And all of those things, they don't do anything to progress anyone but the one that is selfish, right? It, the, the selfishness doesn't help nobody else. It doesn't elevate, it doesn't progress anybody else. But again, we have a high calling today as, as a being, as mankind. God did not create us to be selfish. When he created man, he created man and said to man that we should be fruitful and that we should multiply. What are we doing? There are many, again, professed believers that are the greediest person you'll ever find. They are the most selfish people you will ever find. They aren't moving in sincere faith. They are simply professing to believe in God. We have to be better than that. Faith is more than the profession. You must actually move by faith. Paul will see say there in the 14th verse that we ought not be like children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of man, the cunning craftiness of deceitfulness. Paul, he begins to say that in the 15th verse, as he begins to close out this lesson, he begins to speak about those gifts again. And, and the gifts are to speak the truth in love. Again, speaking the truth in love is not simply verbally speaking the truth in love. It is about the actions as well. Our actions should be to uplift. You, you aren't supposed to be greedy. You aren't supposed to be going out and, and causing strife and divisions through your selfishness and through your greed. If you are a child of God, if you say you are a child of God, your actions should be to uplift those that are around you. It, it hurts me to, to see one say that they are a Christian, but you look at their actions and their actions are not of love. Their actions are selfishness. Their, their actions are of greed. It hurts me because I see someone that does not want the progress of another. When what God wants for us is for us to be fruitful and to multiply. He wants us to be better. He wants us to progress. So 
Why are we so dead set on hindering that progress? It makes you wonder, doesn't it? If the spirit truly resides in, in if it truly resides in you, you will be able to discern the way which is proper and right for you to go, go on. And you'll see that the way of holding someone back, you'll see that that is not the way that is proper. Paul, he said that again, we are to speak the truth in love. This truth, it will help us, he said there in the 15th verse, it will help us to grow into him who is the head. It will help us to grow into Christ. And I believe that we have the ability to reach that level. If we do, if we do not let selfishness and greed hinder us from reaching that level. Paul said that we can reach that level there in the 16th verse if we work together with each part of the body working together. So do you think that we can reach that level? Do you think that we can reach that level of perfection as a people? Some of us will probably be, nope, don't think so. And, and the reason why we don't think so is because we see that there is no love. But even though we may think that, we should again still be striving to, to move in love. You know, we, we should be striving to move in love. When we when see us moving in love, then it may encourage them. It may implore them to move in love as well. Again, the thing that holds us back in the church, I'm not even talking about in society, the thing that holds us back within the church today is that we see someone not moving in love. And we go, well, if they're moving that way, if they're gonna treat me that way, then I'm gonna treat them the way that they treat me. But again, I say to you today that we have a high calling. And that calling is for us, regardless of how others move, we are to move with the love of God in our hearts. And again, when we can move with the love of God in our hearts, we are able to uplift, we are able to elevate those that are around us. And if they see that we're trying to uplift and that, that we're trying to elevate them, then they may take that and they may run with it. And they may elevate, they may move to uplift those that are around them. And as I have said in the past, when, when we're all chipping in, when we're all doing that, when we're all moving in that love, then we can make a better society then we can do better. We can all prosper. We can all grow into being more like Christ. We can all grow to reaching that level of holiness and that level of righteousness. So again, that is what we should take from our lesson today, that high calling. And that high calling for us today is not for us to, to create strife. It is not for us to keep up a whole bunch of mess. It is for us to uplift. It is for us to elevate. And the only way that we can do that is through the love of God. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Now, if you haven't done so already, I ask all of you to, to follow our channel. Be sure that you follow this channel so that you don't miss a Sunday School lesson, so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon or a food for thought. Be sure that you are following this channel today.